<laughs> Ever since she was a little girl, Johanna Rosen loved solving puzzles and working with handicrafts. What she's dreaming of today is the designing of new materials on an entirely new level. Today it is possible to produce materials which are so thin that their thickness can't even be seen with the naked eye. Here individual atoms are used as building blocks to create new materials. Materials which are essential for our society's continued development. Johanna Rosen is an expert in nanotechnology. Her goal is to create thinner and more durable material than anyone else has been able to achieve. I want to develop new and interesting materials that in some way make this world a better place. Because materials are needed everywhere. In equipment, in hospitals, on implants in bodies, uh, to enable us to save energy, to make more long-lasting products and so on. Materials are everywhere and they need to be constantly further developed. Johanna Rosen had originally set out to be a high school teacher. But during her teaching education, she got hooked on the subject of physics. It was a perfect match for her natural sense of curiosity. I've always been interested in how things work and why they work the way they do. And then physics, I think, is the perfect tool for that. Johanna Rosen then chose to focus on research in material science. And that was a decision she never regretted. Material science and materials are one of the pillars of the development of our civilization, in a sense. If you think about it, materials have even given names to the eras that we use to describe how we have developed, like Stone Age, Bronze Age, Iron Age. And even if they, like a thousand years ago, took one bucket of one thing and one bucket of another thing and then they heated it up to get a new material, in a sense, this is exactly what we do today. But we do it on an atomic level instead. Here in the physics building at Linköping University, Johanna Rosen leads a group of 13 scientists who together are developing new super thin materials which can, for example, make tools more durable and hard drives more efficient and even smaller. The first step is to simulate the materials on a computer. In other words, we build a hypothetical material in our computers. And then we do calculations to show us, first of all, is this material stable? In other words, should we spend time on it in the lab or not? För det första så är jag nyfiken på vad du gav till Michelle för siffror eller för några material. Ska vi se gratis? Ja, just det. Är det mest titan då? Ja, mest titan och tantal. Och tantal i mitten. Ja, just det. Den, ja, då... har ju, den har ju gjort. 3 2 han har ju gjort rent titan. Ja, just det. Fast eller... den är fortfarande med 2 1 1 i. Den finns 2 1 1. Mm. Men ju... If the computer's calculations look promising, they take it down to the lab to physically build the material in reality. Hej, hur går det? Johanna Rosen and her colleagues designed the machine that builds these materials themselves. In air there is oxygen and nitrogen and many other things and we don't want that in our samples. So in this uh, gas-free chamber we make our materials. So how does one do atomic handicraft then inside the vacuum machine? How does one build with atoms? A mixture of different types of atoms are put into the vacuum machine shot out with tremendous energy in the form of a gas. This atom gas lands spread out over a surface. And just like that, a completely new atom-thin material is created. The particular blend of atoms that Johanna Rosan chooses makes the atoms settle layer upon layer, like a sheet of plywood, but at a nanoscale. By doing this, different properties are brought forth. A couple of years ago, Johanna Rosen and her team became the first in the world to make these layer-by-layer -layer materials magnetic, which makes them much more energy efficient. 
When we made these materials magnetic, we were extremely happy and very excited. But then for a few minutes you feel a bit empty because you've been working very hard with something for a few years and then suddenly it's done. But then after just a few minutes you realize that um, now we need to work towards tailor making the magnetism uh, and also to start to think about what can these materials be used for. And that is what we're working with today, which is a very exciting part of the project as well. In its own building, a little way from the lab, stands the electron microscope Titan, anchored straight down into the bedrock so as to be as stable as possible. Here it is possible to see whether these materials actually are as they were intended to be. At 10 million times magnification, the individual atoms of Johanna Rosen's new materials can come into view. Kan man bevisa att kolet ligger här? Ja, det kan vi. Genom att förstå det ännu mer eller ha någon annan teknik? Nej, eller? Har någon annan teknik faktiskt. Eftersom det här är precis det som jag har sett i datorn, det som teorin har berättat, så är det ju jättekul och jag tycker det är en fantastiskt vacker bild. So far, Johanna Rosen and her team of scientists have developed six new magnetic materials, which could be the foundation for future, more energy-efficient electronics. About 4% of the energy consumption worldwide goes to PCs, network and, and data centers, data storage. And one a part of this can be solved by making new magnetic materials. If Johanna Rosen gets her wish, her super efficient materials, among other things, will lead to faster, more energy efficient computers, while simultaneously increasing sustainable development. <laughs> 